in a forest, a huge insect monster was hiding on the trees, and it was stalking its prey. It attacked its prey and quickly decapitated it. While the monster was eating the prey it had successfully hunted, it was alarmed when it noticed something. Humans have arrived, and they all simultaneously attacked the monster. The people, who seemed like adventurers, managed to kill the monster, and they posed on top of its carcass to declare their victory. The other people who were watching the broadcast rejoiced and exclaimed that they had finally defeated the S-Class giant Lord Manti's monster, that it was as expected of the Knights of Heaven, and that Master Liu was so handsome. A man, who seemed like a researcher, noted that the game values had finally stabilized at that moment. What just happened was a huge game, but unlike other games, that game was based on the real world. Twenty years ago, countless portals to other worlds suddenly appeared, and those portals led to worlds filled with various magical creatures, which were called jungles. After speculative explorations of the jungles, it was concluded that the jungles, while dangerous, can't interact with the real world, and nothing in the jungle could pass through the portal, including the magical items and powers that the explorers gained there. In the end, Senchuang Technology Company claimed ownership over the jungles, and with their cross-era technological capabilities, they transformed different worlds into a large-scale interactive game called Apocalypse Survival. In the game, after the player passes through a portal, he becomes a knight who has to survive in the other world. Although they might die in the jungle, people who are bored with ordinary life flood into the game to experience something different. Currently, most of the world's population has experienced life in the other worlds, and some rich people have even hired some braves to live in the other worlds. The researcher from earlier was Lin Tian, and he is one of the creators of the game, which he treats as his work of art. Suddenly, someone barged into the room, and he was striding towards Lin Tian with a grim expression on his face. The man threw a stack of documents at Lin Tian and inquired why the Mantis monster's data was reverted, and if he did that. It was Liu Daolong, a direct descendant of the high-ranking executive behind Senchuang Technology Company, who was also a high-level warrior in the game, and he questioned that the adjustments weren't approved by the company's decision-makers, so he asked Lin Tian who authorized him to do such a thing. Lin Tian argued that all of that is for the sake of game balance because the game is currently running too differently from the values he had initially set, which might make the game uncontrollable. Liu Daolong reached his arm out. He grabbed Lin Tian's collar, demanding since when did he get to dictate the company's actions, and he asserted that the company naturally has its own reasons for doing things, so he just has to follow. But Lin Tian fended off Liu Daolong's hand and maintained that he is the person in charge of the entire game content and he has already adjusted the monster's design parameters, so he is afraid that it won't be compatible if they modify them again. Liu Daolong narrowed his eyes, and he looked down on Lin Tian. He declared that in that case, it was up to him to change it, as he wanted to see the results he wanted, and if he didn't get them, no one would get off work. One of the employees mentioned that he told Lin Tian not to make random changes and just listen to what the superiors say, while another employee observed that Lin Tian really thinks he is the boss, but he is just adding to their workload. Liu Daolong added and remarked that if Lin Tian didn't want to do it, he could ask for resignation. Lin Tian looked so pissed when he realized that the goal of those people isn't to make a game that everyone loves at all, and he began contemplating whether he should continue to work there. He was about to articulate something when someone suddenly stopped him by calling him senior and grabbing his hand. It was a beautiful lady, and she urged that Lin Tian shouldn't be impulsive. The lady's name was Luo Yu, and she looked at Lin Tian with a worried look on her face while he called her name. Lin Tian confessed that he was actually burdened with a debt of millions of dollars, so if he lost that high-paying job, he was afraid that he would be beaten to death by the collectors and be left to die on the street. But there was one thing he realized, he pondered if staying in that company was really safe. He mused that he had to think about it, and he bumped into Liu Daolong while glaring at him. Liu Daolong glared back at Lin Tian and cautioned that he needed to know who he is, what the company wants him to do, and not do anything he shouldn't. A few moments later, Liu Yu was sitting with Lin Tian on a bench under a beautiful tree, and as she thanked him for his advice, she acknowledged that she finally understood where the problem lies. Lin Tian suggested that there was nothing wrong with Liu Yu's design itself. He was just making a few comments, but Liu Yu insisted that he shouldn't say that because if it weren't for his help, she wouldn't have been able to get a foothold in the company, so she would like to thank him for that. Liu Yu expressed concern that it was really worrying that Lin Tian is always fighting against the company like that, 
and she was afraid that they were going to do something bad to him because, after all, it is rumored that the company has been using Jungle to get rid of its rivals, so it is really dangerous for him to frequent Jungle like that. Lin Tian assured that, regarding that matter, he would take care of it. As Luo Yu enthusiastically stood up, she was glad that Lin Tian understood and mentioned that she would be heading back to work first. Lin Tian blushed as he looked up at Luo Yu, and he admitted that she was the only person in the whole company who he could talk to, and she was the only light in his bleak world, so he couldn't let her go. He called Luo Yu, and she turned to inquire what the matter was. Lin Tian revealed that the company and even the world may be about to undergo big changes, so she has to be careful. Luo Yu seemed worried as she looked at Lin Tian. Lin Tian assured that Luo Yu shouldn't worry because he will definitely do everything in his power to protect her. Suddenly, Luo Yu kissed Lin Tian on the cheeks, and he was flustered. Luo Yu waved at Lin Tian and expressed that she believed in him, as she was sure that he would be able to protect her. Lin Tian disclosed that the company had hidden a secret that could change the entire world, which he had discovered by accident, but it was a reminder for him. He realized that leaving the company would not only get him hunted down by debt collectors, it would even make it easier for the company to kill him, so he is in a hole he can't get out of. And sooner or later, they will take action, so he must be completely prepared. Meanwhile, in a conference room, a few people had gathered, and someone announced that everyone was there so the 76th meeting of the Senchuang project would officially begin. One of them reported that the R&D department has detected that the jungle is expanding, so he was afraid that they are very close to a big event, but there are still no signs of the jungle lord they covet. Liu Dailong observed that Lin Tian, who is in charge of the game's development, always overturns the values they propose, so he thinks he may have seen something. A mysterious lady concurred that Lin Tian already knew the real secret of the jungle. A mysterious man proclaimed that it was a secret that could turn the world upside down, and people like Lin Tian must not be allowed to know about it, so they should kill him before he could make preparations. Another man recalled that Lin Tian is a very talented development engineer, and in order to get him to work for the company, they had to go to great lengths to put his family in huge debt, and he acknowledged that it was Liu Dailong's idea at that time, so since he has become a nuisance. He should let the knights under his command take care of Lin Tian. The man suggested that he should just kill Lin Tian in the jungle. Liu Dailong looked so pleased, and he boasted that he had been waiting for that day for a long time. A few moments later, a huge explosion occurred in the jungle. Lin Tian was protecting Liu Yu, and as someone labeled them a miserable couple, the person admitted that he never expected that Lin Tian would actually use his game privileges to create such a godly outfit for himself, and he didn't think that he would make his knights face such heavy losses. It was Liu Dailong, and he queried if it wasn't for Luo Yu, who forced Lin Tian to make his presence known. It would have been a real challenge for him to find him, and he questioned him when he started preparing and if it was after he learned the secret. Liu Dailong inquired Lin Tian if he had foreseen from the outset that they would eliminate him there sooner or later. He grinned evilly. Suddenly, a blade pierced out of Lin Tian's chest, and Liu Dailong declared that none of that matters anymore. Luo Yu, whom Lin Tian was shielding, betrayed him from the back. As he collapsed on the ground, Lin Tian couldn't help but question why it had to be her. The jungle was determined to be beyond the real world after an investigation by Senchuang technology 10 years ago, so human beings can coexist with it peacefully. However, the truth is that the jungle is quietly expanding, and within 10 years, the jungle will completely engulf the earth, which means that in the future, all of mankind will have to enter the jungle to survive. Lin Tian was the game architect responsible for transforming the jungle into a game suitable for human habitation, and although the top management tried their best to hide the truth of the matter as the person in charge, Lin Tian still discovered their plan. Because Lin Tan knew that sooner or later he would be silenced by them, he made preparations in advance, so he successfully managed to defeat them, and everything was going the way he wanted, but he hadn't disclosed that the only person he trusted would betray him. Luo Yu asked Lin Tan if he didn't get it, and she revealed that from the beginning, his life has been clearly planned out, from the death of his parents to his massive debt to the company that appeared just in time. She explained that it was all due to his amazing talent for game development, so the company had to come up with a plan. And she was just the last guarantee for that plan, so if he wanted to blame her, he could go ahead. Luo Yu leaned closer to Lin Tian, who was lying on the ground, and remarked that he was so outstanding. Lin Tian realized that it turned out to be Luo Yu. Liu Dailong chimed in, and he suggested that Luo Yu didn't need to tell Lin Tian all that because their mission at that time was just killing him but apparently they don't have to do it themselves. Liu Dailong grinned sinisterly as he glanced behind him. 
there were monsters peeking from the depths of the forest, and Liu Daelong proposed that they should just leave Lin Tian there. As the two of them went through the portal, Liu Daelong recommended that they should just let Lin Tian get eaten by the monster of his own design. The monsters immediately gathered and attacked Lin Tian. Suddenly, a system screen for the jungle system appeared, and it issued a notification that it was activated because it detected the host's life-threatening condition. It began loading the jungle lord identity, and it issued a notification that the loading was a success. It loaded a level 1 alienated mantis with an active skill of flash and a passive skill of jungle instinct. Suddenly, a bright light burst out of the ground. Someone exclaimed that it was a success and inquired if it worked and if they had been teleported. Looking at their sharp claws, the person rejoiced and confirmed that it was it, as he seemed to have successfully misled the company's executives. It was Lin Tian, and as he questioned if the executive considered that his armor was his trump card, he clarified that it was his real trump card. Lin Tian unveiled that research revealed that the jungle was originally home to a powerful creature, the Jungle Lord. And even though it disappeared a long time ago, there is documented data that shows how much it was feared by all races. Lin Tian recalled how they presented it to Liu Daelong, and Luo Yu mentioned that according to the research, when master class creatures die in the jungle, their powers still exist in some form of existence, and Liu Daelong explained that it was a huge potential danger for apocalypse survival. Liu Daelong revealed that he is trying to find a solution to that problem and he will identify the potential dangers as soon as possible and eradicate them completely. Lin Tian disclosed that there are currently no clues about that power, but if anything is discovered, he will inform all the shareholders. Back to the present, Lin Tian was grinning triumphantly as he unveiled that the real escape route he had been conserving for himself was the jungle lord power they had been seeking. As Lin Tian summoned the system, he declared that it was something that matched his power. Suddenly, the jungle system gave Lin Tian a mission of survival, and the details indicate that his presence has attracted the attention of the jungle monsters. So his mission was to endure the jungle monsters hunt, which he would be rewarded with 1000 jungle points for completing. Lin Tian announced that the enemies have already arrived, and it was the dark forest, so the monsters that dwell there are the spectral wolves. And just as Lin Tian completed his sentence, a spectral wolf attacked him from behind, which he managed to dodge. Lin Tian landed safely on the ground and faced the spectral wolf. He remarked that thanks to the passive skill, Jungle Instinct, he could sense malicious intentions and react instinctively. Suddenly, more spectral wolves emerged from the forest, and they were level 1 monsters that reside in the jungle with an average combat strength, and usually prefer to hunt in packs. Lin Tian observed that fortunately, they were all low-level monsters, and he possesses enough skills because, besides the passive skill Jungle Instinct, he also has an attack skill. He charged forward and used his skill, Flash. Lin Tian was moving swiftly, and he observed that his jungle instinct has doubled his senses and the Flash has boosted his mobility. He held onto a tree trunk and observed that the combination worked quite effectively. Lin Tian grinned as he looked down on the spectral wolves, and he noted that it was also combined with his knowledge of the jungle. Suddenly, one of the spectral wolves stepped on something, and the ground cracked as it moved. It was the man-eater flower which remains in a deep state of sleep without an external object to activate it. But once one stepped on it, it would be very difficult to escape it. Lin Tian quickly moved and slashed the spectral wolf that the man-eater flower had ensnared. As he landed on the ground, he got surrounded by the other spectral wolves, but he assessed that it was not that hard to kill them all. A few moments later, a lot of spectral wolves were lying lifelessly on the ground, and as Lin Tian summarized that that was all, he mentioned that his stamina was almost depleted but he had advanced to level 3. Wiping the blood off his face, Lin Tian stated that he is more at home in the jungle than in human society. Suddenly, Lin Tian remarked that the system hadn't alerted him about the mission's completion yet, and he wondered if the threat hadn't been eliminated yet. And while Lin Tian was speculating about it, something was eyeing him from behind. It was a huge spectral wolf, and Lin Tian exclaimed when it pounced at him. The system notified Lin Tian that it was a level 6 Spectral Wolf Lord. As he faced the level 6 Spectral Wolf Lord, Lin Tian remarked that according to what he remembered, the probability of a low-level monster appearing there is less than 1%, so he can't believe he ran into one. Lin Tian observed that the level gap between them is so great that he could feel the pressure just by standing there. The Spectral Wolf Lord charged at Lin Tian again, and he managed to dodge it by jumping to the side. As he safely landed on the ground, Lin Tian exclaimed that his stamina was almost at its limit. Lin Tian was surprised when the Spectral Wolf Lord suddenly appeared in front of him. 
he was not able to react, and the spectral wolf lord managed to maul his chest with its sharp claws. Lin Tian crashed on the ground and gasped that it was so fast. He was surprised again when the spectral wolf lord quickly charged at him again. That time, Lin Tian managed to block the spectral wolf lord's attack with his arms. But Lin Tian was struggling as he was being overpowered, so he asked himself if he was really going to die there, and he declared that he couldn't die there. Lin Tian's vision was getting blurry, and he muttered that he had survived all of the company's attempts to kill him, so he had to get revenge on the guys who manipulated his life. He recalled Liu Yu and vowed that he must get revenge, especially on her. Lin Tian remembered the time when Liu Yu asserted that she had gone through the entire structure of the game, but there still seemed to be some errors running, and she asked him what was going on. He explained that it was what makes the jungle so different because it is not like the games they have created in the past. So her framework needs to take more possibilities into account instead of operating according to a rigid formula because the jungle is alive. Back to the present, Lin Tian used that the jungle is alive, so he can't predict everything that happens accurately. Just like Luo Yu's betrayal and the sudden appearance of the spectral wolf lord, Lin Tian insisted that he must do it. He must live, as it was the only way for him to take revenge. Suddenly, his wings began to vibrate. Lin Tian began lifting himself off the ground. He resolved that he must get revenge and quickly turned away from the Spectral Wolf Lord. Lin Tian quickly flew away from it. Suddenly, the Spectral Wolf Lord used its skill, blood tracking, and its eyes were focused on Lin Tian. The scent of Lin Tian's blood left a trace, and the Spectral Wolf Lord was able to sense it. While traversing through the forest, Lin Tian acknowledged that a level 6 spectral wolf lord has the ability to track blood, so there was absolutely no way to avoid its tracking by simply running away. He conceded that man-eating flowers, exploding berries, and mist toxin mushrooms were all useless as they wouldn't work against a level 6 spectral wolf lord, and he pondered what else he could do in that situation. Suddenly, Lin Tian saw a huge tree, and he asked himself if it could be something. While the spectral wolf lord was chasing him from behind, Lin Tian declared that there was a way out, and it was the tree. Lin Tian approached the tree, and he dug his claws into it. He gritted his teeth as he continued to dig his claws into them. Meanwhile, the spectral wolf lord was already approaching the tree he was in. Suddenly, a level 7 stalagmite bear emerged from the tree, and Lin Tian exclaimed that it had happened. It was another dominant lord found in that forest. Lin Tian quickly flew upwards to avoid the two lord monsters. He landed on a tree branch. Lin Tian observed from above as the spectral wolf lord and stalagmite bear faced each other. As the two lords began to fight, Lin Tian observed that the fight was so intense that he could finally breathe a sigh of relief. Lin Tian realized that he has got to get out of there quickly while those monsters fight each other, but he was surprised when the system showed him a warning sign. The system showed him the mission details, which made Lin Tian wonder if he would fail the mission if he left at that moment, and he murmured that he was so focused on escaping that he almost forgot about the mission. Observing the fight below him, Lin Tian concluded that the stalagmite bear was provoked because of his actions, so it shouldn't be included in the mission, so the only one left is the spectral wolf lord, and he just needed to wait for a while because the stalagmite bear's level was 7, and since it was a solitary lord, it should be even stronger and it shouldn't take it too long to kill the Spectral Wolf Lord. A few moments later, the system congratulated Lin Tian for completing the mission, and as it gave him the reward of 1000 jungle points, it informed him that the skill panel had been activated and that skills could be upgraded through jungle points. As the stalagmite bear walked away from the dead Spectral Wolf Lord, Lin Tian noted that, as expected, his mission was marked complete as soon as the Spectral Wolf Lord died. Looking at the system screen, Lin Tian remarked that in addition to jungle points, the skill panel was also activated. The skill panel showed Lin Tian his skills, he has C-level general skills, which were attach poison, which costs 400 jungle points, stealth, which uses 600 points, and flight, which costs 600 jungle points. He also has a C-level advanced skill, monster will, which will activate the will of the jungle lord to gain strength beyond his capacity. But as the skill effect grows stronger, he will gradually lose his own will, which makes it a risky skill and it costs 1000 jungle points. He also has B, A, and S level skills, which were inactive, and it also showed that the system store was not active and his current jungle points were 1000. Lin Tian affirmed that he must find a safe place and study it carefully, but suddenly, the stalagmite bear dug its claws into the tree, causing it to shake, and Lin Tian, who was on its branch, was losing his balance. Lin Tian remarked that the stalagmite bear was not something he could deal with at the moment, so he had to run away quickly. Suddenly, sharp rocks flew towards Lin Tian, but he managed to dodge them. 
but as he tried to fly away, those sharp rocks hit his wings and tore them. Lin Tian quickly grabbed onto one of the trees while dodging those sharp rocks. While holding onto the tree, Lin Tian was still bombarded with those sharp rocks, so he cursed and exclaimed that the stupid bear doesn't seem to want to let him go. But he can't go on like that because one hit from those stalagmites and he is done for. Looking at the skill panel, Lin Tian observed that it was not good, and at the moment, he could only look for an opportunity within those few skills. As the stalagmite bear continued to throw stalagmites on Lin Tian, he commented that the stupid bear was far more troublesome than it looks because, with its rough skin and thick flesh, poison attacks may not be effective on it, and he is afraid that it is impossible to avoid it with stealth due to its earth attribute perception, and unfortunately, he only has enough skill points to activate two skills. Lin Tian noted that as for the flying skill, although it is useless in a real battle, it might help him escape at the moment. But the stupid stalagmite bear just cut off his wings, and they won't heal right away, so it was obviously impossible for him to fly in that situation. As the stalagmites continued to hit the tree, it finally snapped. Lin Tian jumped away from the tree, and he cursed and stated that once he ran out of stamina, he would definitely die, so there was nothing he could do about it. He mentioned that he could only do one thing, and he clicked on the monster will button on the system screen. The system notified Lin Tian that the learning was successful, and he had mastered the skill monster will. Lin Tian suddenly grew a long, sharp blade on his arm, and he jumped on top of the stalagmite bear. He moved quickly past the bear. As he landed on the ground, he managed to deal multiple slashing moves and use his skill, Flash, 99 times. The stalagmite bear crashed on the ground, and Lin Tian declared that finally, the problem was solved. Suddenly, Lin Tian felt a sharp, shooting pain in his body. Lin Tian knelt on the ground due to pain. He grabbed his head, which seemed to be the source of pain, and he gritted his teeth. As he felt an ominous figure looming behind him, Lin Tian suspected if it was the remnant of the Jungle Lord's consciousness. At Senchuang Technology Company, Liu Dailong and Liu Yu were in a meeting, and Liu Dailong remarked that Lin Tian had been executed by them in the jungle. So from that point onward, Liu Yu will officially take over Lin Tian's position and will be responsible for the development of Apocalypse Survival. The man expressed that he hoped that Liu Yu wouldn't let them down, and he inquired if there was any news about the Jungle Lord. Luo Yu explained that previous research has estimated that in the history of the jungle, high-level monsters were called masters, and they could be killed, but their will and strength would remain the same. She added that it will be inherited again from some kind of reincarnation, and at the same time, the successor also bears the risk of being devoured by the will of the monster. The man observed that it meant that the power was rather dangerous, which Luo Yu confirmed and noted that without possessing stronger spiritual power to fight against it, they would be devoured even if they gained that dominant power. The man concluded that in any case, if humans want to enter the jungle, they must control that power, and Liu Yu must know that high risks are often accompanied by great benefits, so she should go for it. Liu Yu assured that she will definitely find the power of the jungle lord for the company. Meanwhile, at the jungle, Lin Tian was feeling an overwhelming pressure, and he questioned if it was the remaining consciousness of the jungle lord. Lin Tian dug his claws into the ground to appease the pain, he looked like he was in so much pain, and he cried out that it was invading his mind, so he would probably become a killing monster if he lost. Something started to shatter, and Lin Tian vowed that he absolutely couldn't lose to it as he had to live to avenge them. Lin Tian bent over backwards, and he screamed as the pain intensified. The spirit of the jungle lord's consciousness and Lin Tian's consciousness seemed to be battling over his body. Suddenly, a strong aura was released towards the sky. Something exploded in the area where Lin Tian was. Dust and smoke filled the area, and they were starting to dissipate. Lin Tian emerged from the smoke, looking more human, and he revealed that he finally got rid of the side effects. And although the destructive power of that skill was amazing, the damage it caused to his spirit was too much. He elaborated that a new evolutionary form has also been unlocked, and although it is still a monster body, it retains more human traits while maintaining a human will. Lin Tian used that he guessed he would have to find a way to start the Helen Butterfly Elf program in order to evolve into a full-fledged monster in the future. He recalled that Helen Butterfly Elves are a race of light-attributed elves in the jungle, and they have very excellent support skills. Lin Tian remembered that when he presented it in a previous meeting, Liu Dailong dismissed that the Helen Butterfly race isn't very powerful and its impact on the game is almost nothing. And besides, entering their domain, the Labyrinth Valley, was dangerous, so he questioned why they should waste time on them when they've got more important things to do. Lin Tian argued that the game lacks a creature that could serve as a guide NPC, and Helen Butterfly Elf is undoubtedly the perfect fit. 
But Liu Daelong scoffed that it was not like it was a must of design. Suddenly, a man interjected and stated that there was no need for that argument because Lin Tian is in charge of the game, and he makes all the decisions, and he declared that he has always been in charge of combat explorations, so if he doesn't want to do it, he should get someone else to do it. Liu Daelong decided that he would let Luo Feng from the second team do it because he would like that kind of mission. Back in the present, Lin Tian proclaimed that the Helen Butterfly Elf's power could enhance his spiritual power, and if the contract could be successfully concluded, there would be no limit to his monster will. Lin Tian lamented that previously, he wanted to use the company's power to open the entrance to the Helen Butterfly Elves, and since then, the Helen Butterfly Elf program has been handed over to Liu Feng of the second team. He regretted that it was a pity that Liu Daolong didn't take that mission seriously, so it hasn't been taken down. Lin Tian considered that, if he remembered correctly, one of the guys who often targeted him was from the same team. He resolved that if he wanted to deal with them, he had to find a way to unlock other general skills first. Suddenly, the system assigned Lin Tian a mission to guard the jungle, which was a long-term mission divided into several sub-missions. The rewards for completing overall missions were the B-level skill panel activation and unlocking monster mode and he was also given daily missions. One was to be warm and friendly and help the weaker mushroom clan in the jungle to repair their fortifications and gain their favor, which gives 50 jungle points as a reward. And the other was to raise prestige by mediating the dispute between the spider lair and the dry bones cave to show his prestige as the jungle lord, which gives 100 jungle points as a reward. Looking at the mission, Lin Tian realized that at that time, it was even divided into main missions and side missions, some of which were simple, but the rewards were too small, which made him realize that the more risky a mission is, the higher its rewards, so the rewards are calculated based on the simplicity of the mission. And as Lin Tian pondered, the monster mode unlock and the rewards of the main mission looks quite intriguing. He decided to complete a few daily missions and unlock a couple of life-saving skills first. Lin Tian gained 50 jungle points as he helped the Mushroom Clan finish their construction, and the enthusiastic mushrooms invited him to taste their poop which Lin Tian politely declined. In the spider lair, Lin Tian was pestered by a big-breasted female spider who seemed to want to do something wrong, and he received 100 jungle points for accomplishing the mission of raising his prestige. Lin Tian was taking care of bird eggs on a cliff, and he was fighting off a venomous snake monster while being pecked on the head by a baby buzzard that had broken out of its shell. A few moments later, Lin Tian looked so tired as he finished his daily missions, and he expressed relief that he finally got 700 points so he could unlock a skill. Lin Tian was deciding which of the three, Attach Poison, Stealth, and Flight, was better when he suddenly noticed that there was a new mission. He looked at the system screen intently as he focused on the new mission. It was a side mission of hunting intruders, where he should hunt down the human race from beyond the jungle to show his resolve as the jungle lord with a reward of 1,000 jungle points. The overall mission rewards will be sent according to the completion amount, and there will be an overall mission reward, which was the activation of the store feature. When Lin Tian read that the mission was about hunting intruders, he acknowledged that it meant the players. Lin Tian deduced that the store feature was actually very important because, in that way, jungle points are no longer used solely for skills, and since he has decided to go down the monster path, he would completely abandon his identity as a human being. If you love this series, please comment part 2 for the next one.